Welcome. Welcome humans, welcome creatures. Today is Thursday and after yesterday's announcement of the pre-patch of Dragonflight coming in just a couple of weeks, it's time to look back. It's time to look at what we left behind in this expansion, how things have gone in this expansion, what we can take as, as an idea, as a relative point of comparison as we enter Dragonflight with how things have gone in Shadowlands, what can we expect to to see continue or to change what we want to see change or what we want to see continue in Dragonflight compared to what happened in Shadowlands. And today's video is going to be about raiding. Now we're going to have our own separate video about Mythic Plus, about the things that happened this expansion when it came to Mythic Plus. But for today, we are looking at the raid and we are starting with the last thing we had to go through in the raid, which was season four the meme season of Shadowlands with the Fated Raid. Now, it's very difficult and borderline useless to even consider, to even compare what happened this season because things were so wildly different and also so fast, so quick. There wasn't much of any progression happening because the bosses were falling so quickly and it wasn't nearly as, as difficult and as tough compared to the previous seasons. So when we go and look at how the situation went, you have Castonatria where it sees demonology towards the top of the of the results as well as unholy fury outlaw shadow priest and survival hunter but then the moment you move into sanctum suddenly elemental is here suddenly unholy took the place of frost death knight who is now halfway across the rankings now suddenly there is destruction right below demonology when if you go back to castornatria destruction was middle of the pack things are very very wild you know now we have a frost mage and the fire mage in the top half of sanctum you go back to castornatria and frost mage is second to last right so it's a it's a complete mess you know it's very difficult to gauge all of the things that happened this season you can of course you can of course find some consistency because look at who's first in sepulcher fated it's demonology who is first in Sanctum Fated, it's Demonology. Who is first in Castonatria Fated, it's Demonology. So you can definitely find some, some correlation, right? I'm pretty sure Unholy and Frost Death Knight are at the top, towards the top in Sepulchre. You have Unholy towards the top again in Sanctum, and you have Unholy towards the top again in Fated Castonatria. That's another thing you can see happening very often. The same can be said for another spec, which is Outlaw. Outlaw is fourth in Castonatria, and then it's seventh in Sanctum and then finishes fifth in Sepulchre. So we can still draw some, some conclusions about season four, but you know, it's not nearly as serious. It's not nearly as important. Once we go back to the actual serious seasons, starting from Castonatria, this was the very messy situation of Castonatria. Plenty of little squiggly lines going through all of the first four months of the tier and you can immediately see some very clear outliers at the top of the performance after the first couple of weeks of stabilizing you can see all of the different super wild jumps of the different specs after a couple of weeks you started getting three very clear results balanced through with affliction warlock and fire mage and they continue to be the the outliers in best performance all the way up until 9.0.5 that was the, the bridge patch, which buffed quite a few other specs that changed how this looks. But for the majority of the first season of Castornatria, we will remember that Banos Druid, Affliction Warlock and Fire Mage were the three overperforming outliers. Some people with a little bit of a, of a better memory might also remember this free fall color right here, which is Unholy. Unholy, as you can see here, stayed at the top. For a few weeks right it was actually contending for the top and then it was nerfed and started going down that's the the fall of unholy death knight in the first season of of shadowlands then you had 9.0.5 as mentioned which had a few specs getting buffed in particular you had the shadow priest raising up as well as assassination rogue also growing compared to before but you know what happens three to four months into a tier usually gets forgotten much more clearly. Many players will remember Balanced Druid and Fire Mage being OP in Season 1. Way less players will remember Assassination Rogue being OP in Season 1. In Season 2, in the Sanctum of Domination season, you have a difference after we skip the first couple of weeks of mayhem over here. You have 
quite a quite an interesting set of changes because you do have now arms warrior being at the top you have subtlety rogue and you have feral druid being at the top you know very weird we haven't seen this before this was the the melee season if you remember this was the dps ranking i still have 12 weeks so three months into the tier and you can see that arms warrior subtlety rogue assassination rogue outlaw rogue feral druid and windwalker monk make up the top seven the only outlier was affliction warlock so six out of the top seven best performers of Sanctum were all melee. And even further down, you still had uh, Forced Act Knight, you have Havoc Demon Hunter, you had Fury Warrior. So basically the entirety of the top half, with the exception of a handful of range specs, was completely dominated by melee specs. This was the, the, main, the main thing to remember for Sanctum. After the first season, where you had Balanced Druid, you had Shadow Priest, you had Fire Mage, early on and then it fizzled out max machine panther was also doing quite well then season two completely gets flipped over its head and now it's way more melee players way more melee specs being powerful in sanctum now the mid patch the mid patch of this tier was 9.1.5 this was the one that started removing all of the different limitations to your covenant swapping for example right so it gave much more freedom to players to play whichever covenant they wanted for the best situation possible but it didn't really change the situation in the raid in fact it made it even worse because now not only do you still have the rogue specs at the top but it also buffed outlaw now you have all three rogue specs at the top you have both of the warrior specs at the top you still have feral druid now you also have havoc demon hunter this <laughs> this situation was actually quite jarring as you can see all of the top eight here all of the top eight in performance were melee dps this is probably going down in history as the most dominant melee tier ever purely based on performance uh, compared to the the range dps you had plenty of problems in the range departments you know mages surprisingly were not doing nearly as well this was the tier where balanced druid got nerfed and after being the top in season one became much worse in season two none of the warlocks were doing particularly well demonology destruction were still not nearly as powerful in season two compared to the buffs they received in season three of shadowlands so this was the melee domination tier the last one is sepulcher so that the freshest one we have gotten a few months ago in in march is when we started sepulcher now after the first couple of weeks of madness over here towards late march this is where we ended up with obviously as i said it wasn't too long ago so you might all remember the fact that the two warlock specs were what took over followed by the surprise right out of nowhere a spec that was previously ignored forgotten you know put on a side which is survival hunter that's the other spec that rose out of nowhere to become a top spec of course this will be much more prevalent once we go in the video about mythic plus because that's where survival was much more powerful than in the raid but even in the raid it was strong enough to warrant being the best performing melee dps spec out of all the specs in the game you have demo and destruction at the top followed by survival and then by frost death knight which is quite the underrated spec usually it always performs very well it has performed quite well throughout the seasons but never quite the popular pick in raid encounters compared to many others you also had the continuation of a few trends mage for example despite being the top pick in season one with fire throughout the seasons and then season two and three mage was perhaps in the weakest expansion it had which is still quite interesting because of course it was still played a lot by by world first guilds it was still a plenty popular pick in a population right even if we go in castonatria where it was very popular you can see the picks by mage is second if you go in sanctum where mage was not nearly as strong and still gapped by all the melee specs mage was still in the top half of popularity and even in sepulcher where all three mage specs were consistently towards the bottom consistently towards the least performing specs you can see the popularity mage fire and frost are still towards the top half of course not top two anymore the majority of range dps specs moved to destruction or or demo lock or, or marksmanship hunter but mage was still definitely popular so if you had to go for an overall judgment i would say this expansion as a whole has been the the weakest for mage in quite a while 
in terms of power, in terms of popularity, and in terms of how prevalent, how prominent they were in raids. It's definitely been quite a weak expansion. Conversely, this has been perhaps one of the strongest expansions for Warlocks. Warlocks have not been weak before. Warlocks have been popular plenty of times overall, but this expansion, especially in the way they cycled through their specs, you know, the expansion started with Affliction being the best spec and ended with Demonology being the best spec, with Destruction in the middle being the best spec for Mythic Plus. They definitely had a quite good overall expansion in terms of power for all three specs, which is quite rare. Even when Mage was popular, usually it was just Fire. Very, very few times it was either Frost or Arcane, but almost never it was all three of them at the same time. The same goes for Rogue. Very often it was either Outlaw that was OP in Mythic Plus, or it was Subtlety or Assassination that were very strong in the raid, but very rarely they got to share this much power throughout the course of an expansion like Warlock did in Shadowlands. So we talked about the prize for the best class of the raid of Shadowlands, which went to Warlock, and then the prize for the most disappointing class of the raid in Shadowlands, which went to Mage. Compared to their expectations, compared to what was expected of Mage, they were definitely the most disappointing. What about the worst spec? What about the prize for being the least overall, the least played, the least performing and overall the most disappointing out of all specs. This one is much harder to answer because, you know, in season one and in season two, survival was at the bottom, always. This is Castonatria, for example, and you have survival right at the bottom joined by subtlety. But then in season two, where is subtlety? Subtlety is here. So subtlety is all the way towards the top, while Survival is again towards the bottom. Survival has been the worst in two tiers, but the third one, they were the best melee spec. Subtlety also has been the worst in one tier, but then they were the best one, one of the best ones in the tier after that. So there hasn't been much consistency, even Balanced Druid, you know, Balanced Druid is right at the bottom here in Sepulchre, and then Balanced Druid is also towards the bottom half in Sepulchre, but it was the best one in Castonatria. It's quite hard. To, to give the prize to the overall worst spec of an expansion. If we had to go purely by results, then the answer would have to be Frost plus Arcane Mage. Because as I said, plenty of other specs have had some time in the sun. They had some time to shine, even if not for the entire expansion, at least once in a while, they were doing very well. Sometimes it was subtlety, sometimes it was assassination, sometimes it was Windwalker, sometimes it was enhancement, but Frost and Arcane, never. Frost and Arcane have been consistently going towards the bottom half of the rankings. They have never been meta. They have never been used multiple times in a tier or in multiple bosses, one after the other, for being very strong. <laughs> if I had to give a prize to being just overall disappointing and weakest, the weakest of the specs in Shadowlands when it comes to raids, then we've got a tied double first place to Frost and Arcane Mage for just being overall bland and unremarkable throughout the whole expansion when it comes to raiding. We have another prize to give at these Oscars of raiding. It's the question mark prize. The question mark prize goes to Balanced Druid because it is true that Balanced Druid started very well in Castonatria. They were the top pick in the raid and as we will see in the Mythic Plus video, they were also the top pick, one of the top picks in Mythic Plus. So they had a very strong start, but then, then they fell off a cliff. They just went out of the Mythic Plus meta, they went also much lower performance when it came to raiding. But after Castonatria, Balanced Druid disappointed way more. You know, if we go back to our snapshot of the three months mark in the Sanctum of Domination, again, Balanced Druid is, is disappointing towards the bottom half of the specs. We have all seen in Sepulchre how disappointing Balanced Druid was. They were constantly towards the bottom of performance across all of the range specs as well. This was our three month snapshot of Sepulchre of the first ones and the performance of Balanced Druid was the worst range DPS spec in the game, even lower than Arcane Mage. The question mark prize comes in because when we actually go and look at the popularity, for example, in this very same week, in this very same week 12 of Mythic Raiding, three months into the tier, 
the popularity looked like this. Hmm. Okay. What about the snapshot of the 12 weeks of Sanctum where Bans to Ruid was also in the bottom half? How were they doing in popularity? Okay. <laughs> so, the question mark is awarded because Bans to Ruid, despite performing badly and even going worse and worse, tier after tier, into Sepulchre uh, becoming the, basically one of the worst performers in terms of overall damage, they still remained very, very popular. They still remained, in fact, the most popular ranged DPS pick. All the way throughout Season 3, throughout Sepulchre, only into Season 4, they started getting overtaken at times by Destruction Warlock. That was before Destruction Warlock was nerfed. So definitely a puzzling conviction by many Druid players to continue playing balance, even though their performance wasn't nearly justifying how popular it was overall. And the main reason, the main reason why I want to keep these things in a video, why I want to remember all of these things that happened in Shadowlands is so that when Dragonflight comes out, when the first tier comes out, when we start seeing some numbers, some performance reviews of the specs, we can go back and compare them with how things were going in Shadowlands. No reason really, just for fun, just for, for some data, just for, for, for getting angry that some specs that weren't particularly strong in Shadowlands ended up not being particularly strong in Dragonflight as well. For example, it would be somewhat sad, you know, if, if Arcane Mage and Frost Mage, for example, continue being mediocre in Dragonflight, it would be somewhat sad if Demonology and Destruction continue being very strong at the release of Dragonflight, or if Herald Druid and, and, and Red Paladin continue being lowly played and lowly performing like they did in Shadowlands as well. I wanted this to be some sort of reminder, some sort of a time capsule for the end of Shadowlands to take stock of everything that happened in the raids of Shadowlands right as we get the announcement that Season 4 is ending and we are approaching the transition into Dragonflight. We get to save all of these things for comparison, for later, for when we get to dive in in some Dragonflight content very soon at this point. With this recap being said and done, I'm going to leave you to the rest of your Thursday. Of course, as usual, round of applause and thanks to all of my Patreon supporters for helping me and allowing me to continue to produce WoW content for everyone. Also, also, if you want to support in other ways, which for example include liking and commenting down below as well as subscribing to the channel, these ways are pretty nice because they are completely free. You don't spend any money and I would say not even that much effort to do so and that would help a lot myself and the channel lastly you can follow me on twitter as well as subscribing to my patreon for even more social interactions and general simping to yours truly now it's time to leave thank you guys again for watching see you guys soon and in the meantime okay now it's getting a little bit hotter though i was fine with getting it colder but now with this sweater i think i need to i need to balance it out a little bit and get this out of the way